There's this word in Japanese, ikigai. It kind of means to find your calling in life, to find that one thing. It's exciting to be around people that have found that, you know? You can feel it and taste it and I guess I just wanted to recreate something like that. I had an office job. I earned good money. I didn't work in the evenings and I went on holiday. But I couldn't escape the feeling that something was missing. Ever since I lived in Japan, like 20 years ago now, I'd always really dreamed about trying to introduce a little bit about what I fell in love with in Japan to London. That was the light bulb moment, I suppose, when I just said to myself, well, if that's what you would do and money wasn't an issue, then that's what you should do now. A few days later, I quit my job and uh, was on a plane to Japan without having won the lottery. <laughs> The bit that you can actually live on in Japan, 20%. It's like the size of Wales, and you've got 130 million people. So the cities are just crazily packed with people. And as a result, it just throws up all these very, very exciting and interesting experiences. You can walk down a back alley which you think has absolutely nothing in it, and then there'll be like a tiny little doorway opening up to a restaurant that has like four seats in it, and there's like an old guy behind the counter making the same dish every single day. He knows every spare centimeter of the place that is working, so everything is just muscle memory and like what they call these flow moments. It's just a spectacular atmosphere in those kind of places. I wanted to create something that's a bit like that here. And so I went to a school to learn how to make like the basic building blocks of ramen. I mean, like everything, I could explain the basic concept to you in five minutes, but it's about trying to drill down into each of the constituent parts. I wanted to do something that touched people, that made people happy, that introduced people to what it was that I fell in love with when I was in Japan. And the meaning of monohon is real thing in Japanese. So I decided to call my shop monohon. The Japanese approach to food, I guess you could say it's like their approach to everything in life, which is to focus down. I think they call it Kaizen, this process they have of constant improvement. You're probably thinking, like I was, that you know there's white flour and brown flour and there's plain flour and that's pretty much it, but that's not it. <laughs> there's like a thousand different ways you can classify flour, whole chemical analysis, how much gluten, protein, the water content, how fine they mill the flour, seven different ways of measuring starch. It's incredible. We import the flour from Japan and we make the noodles every day ourselves. We buy the bones from a local butcher and we make the soup every single day. It takes us all day and that can be like a real pain, but you know, what's the point otherwise? You've got to adapt to where you are. But what I didn't want to do is adapt the taste of the food. I didn't want to adapt the dish. I really wanted to create a dish that I think you would find in Japan. You know, um, I had a good job with good money and I quit that and I spent all of my savings to start this thing up. Constantly, I constantly worry whether or not this is gonna work. It's hard, you know, it's really, really, really hard work. I'm super tired all the time. You know, there's problems every single day. You're at the back end of a 95 hour week and one of your key pieces of equipment in the kitchen has broken down for the fifth time and you're trying to get the guy out to fix it and you haven't slept in three days and that's when you need to step back and remind yourself what it is you're aiming for and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve. A couple of weeks ago, I saw two customers just sitting here and they were kind of looking at me as if I'd forgotten their order or something. And I said, is everything okay? And they said, yeah, we're just taking it all in. And I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, we used to live in Japan. And it's like 10 years since we were there. And this is the first place we've been to that makes us feel like we're back in Japan. And I guess hearing someone say that, that's like all I could ever ask for. At the end of the day, it's a restaurant. And there are, you know, millions of restaurants in the world. And it's <laughs> probably the second oldest profession. You know, I'm not inventing the wheel here. That having been said, to walk away from a comfortable life and to put yourself in this danger, I guess there's a certain feeling of pride. I did what it was I said I was gonna do. You know, a lot of people talk about what they're gonna do and don't do it. My name's Ian Wheatley, and I guess you could say I'm a ramen chef now. I just love the feeling of the dough. 
smooth and beautiful. Everything's okay with the world now, you know.